Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic, the differences between the seizure and syncope. Because both the seizure and syncope causes loss of consciousness. And hence, how are we going to differentiate seizure from syncope? Seizure is a loss of consciousness. It is because of hyper excitability and hyper synchronization of cerebral neurons. Because of that, person will throw seizures. It could be seizures could be in the form of altered behavior or feelings like temporal lobe involvement or weakness or sensory disturbance when the frontal or parietal lobe gets affected. Whatever may be the lobe getting affected, usually it produces a loss of consciousness when it goes to both the cortices. Likewise, syncope also causes a transient disturbance in consciousness, a loss of consciousness which is transient. It is because of the decreased blood flow to the brain because of the hyperperfusion or hypotension, whatever may be the cause, because of the decreased blood supply to the brain, person will lose consciousness transiently and will have syncope. So both will have a loss of consciousness. So how are we going to differentiate syncope from seizures? With certain characteristics, we can differentiate seizures from syncope. First, the characteristic, the first is onset. Seizure will present suddenly. Person is already suddenly he'll fall down and he may start throwing seizures because it is a sudden hyper excitability and hyper synchronization of neurons. Whereas syncope is because of the decreased blood supply to the brain, either because of the decreased effectiveness of the heart or because of the autonomic vascular responses that decreased blood supply to the heart to the brain like vasovagal reflexes. So the onset will be gradual in syncope. Person is talking slowly, he says, oh, I have a feeling as if I'm going to faint. He says, oh, I, I, I'm going to faint, I'm going to faint. And then he faints. It takes some time. So syncope, the onset is gradual. Whereas seizure, he'll be talking suddenly, he'll throw seizures and he'll fall down. So the onset is very, very important. A sudden in onset, always think of seizures a gradual and evolving pattern of loss of consciousness think of syncope and what are the symptoms prior to the event patient in seizures may have aura sometimes like uh, familiarity with unfamiliar surroundings like deja vu uh, any other symptom but in syncope usually it is because they stand and because of the decreased blood supply, as I said earlier, they'll have lightheadedness and giddiness followed by total loss of consciousness. So the symptoms prior to the event, it could be something like deja vu if it is temporal lobe affected in seizures and in syncope, it is lightheadedness and giddiness. The trigger factor, the trigger factor for seizures are there. There are two definite trigger factors for seizures. One, what we see in absence seizures. Second, what we see in myoclonic seizures. In absence seizures, when we ask the child to hyperventilate, they may start, then they start throwing seizures because hyperventilation is a strong triggering factor for absence seizures. Absence seizures, you, we usually see it in children, childhood age. So when they hyperventilate, it may be a triggering factor for seizures. So always you should ask history of triggering factor like hyperventilation. For myoclonic seizures, they are flashing lights. In fact, when we record EEG in a supposed to be patient in a patient who is supposed to be suffering from myoclonic seizures, we give flat flashlights, flickering lights. It is known as photodrivic response. So when we when there's a trigger, when there's a flashlight, if the person starts getting seizures like myoclonic seizures. It is myoclonic epilepsy. So for absent seizures, the triggering factor is hyperventilation. For myoclonic seizures, the triggering factor is the flickering lights. For syncope, generally, 
it is because of the decreased blood supply so orthostatic when they stand up they may get giddiness and then they may fall down that is syncope orthostatic second it could be vasovagal you might have seen persons who will go and attend someone's say death they get emotionally upset or they see lot of blood on the on the ground these emotionally disturbing factors will trigger the autonomic response and vasovagal response decrease blood supply to the brain and then they fall down so we should always ask history of whether the person has lost consciousness because in a in a standing position or when he has seen something disturbing some emotionally disturbing event like blood or attending a person's death or funeral urinary incontinence in seizures they generally have urinary incontinence in fact if there's a urinary incontinence we always suspect seizures in syncope the urinary incontinence incontinence is uncommon likewise when they throw seizures they have tendency to bite especially the lateral part of the tongue so when there's a tongue bite especially in the lateral part of the tongue it is more in favor of seizures and if it is not there it is more in favor of syncope the duration of loss of consciousness seizures it may go on for some time but syncope there is a transient loss of blood supply but the moment they they lie down the blood flow to the brain gets increased and therefore they become well so the loss of consciousness the duration is more in seizure but the duration of loss of consciousness is less in syncope then person because of the exhaustion and the deprivation of nutrients in seizures they may develop after seizures they may develop weakness in fact a person having a sudden onset of weakness we should always cons consider seizures what we call it as tort spalsy post ictal weakness so in a person who has thrown seizure may develop weakness after the seizure because of exhaustion and deprivation of the nutrients and develop weakness what we call as tort spalsy so tort spalsy is suggestive of seizures we don't see tort spalsy in syncope likewise once a person recovers the syncope as the blood improves they become completely all right they have a giddiness on standing they fall down the blood increases and they become completely all right the moment you start interacting they'll in interact with you with with full senses they are completely in their conscious state and in their sensorium they are not at all confused they are in a very clarity state of clarity but in persons who are having seizures they have a post ictal confusion even after stopping their seizures if you interact with them they appear to be confused they do not know where they are they appear confused they are dazed so if there's a post ictal confusion it is more in favor of seizures if there's no post ictal post ictal confusion it is more in favor of syncope then once a person has got seizures and once they lie down it it is going to continue because seizures has got nothing to do with the blood supply to the brain whereas in syncope if they are asked to lie down the blood to the brain improves and therefore they recover from syncope so we should always ask whether there is an improvement with lying down posture or not if there is an improvement in lying down posture it is syncope if there is no improvement in lying down posture it is seizures then the relationship to the deceased organ in seizures it is usually because of the brain or metabolic factors like hypoglycemia or hyponatremia or hypoxemia and brain any any infective pathology tumor sol so it is related to the brain and metabolic factors in seizures whereas in syncope it is usually related to the heart if there's any problem with the heart there's a heart disease like stokes adam syndrome complete heart block there's a decreased blood supply to the brain or autonomic vascular reflexes like vasovagal syncope so in seizure the usual organs which are disordered or the pathology is either in the brain or the metabolic factors like hypoglycemia hyponatremia or hypoxemia in syncope the pathophysiologic features pathophysiologic mechanism lies in the heart or in the autonomic vascular reflexes like vasovagal syncope so differentiating a person having seizures or syncope because of loss of consciousness appears to be difficult but if we go methodically and if we ask a pertinent history we'll be able to confidently diagnose a person whether he's got seizures or syncope 
I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture. If you have any suggestions or comments, kindly post on to my YouTube channel. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Sinwas Medical Concepts, and my FB page, Dr. Sinwas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.